Hello Slicey Dicers, this is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Kershaw Fly-Through. This is an RJ Martin design. First time that Kershaw and KAI have used this, uh, this see-through pivot design on a budget model. See-through pivot meaning so you can see through it. Yeah, it's got a little proprietary tool. We'll talk a lot more about that later. But a uh, neat little design just came out. Uh, this is October 2018 as I'm recording this, and this just came out. Uh, and I wanted to get my hands on one because I have another one of R.J. Martin's designs that I really like a lot. This is the ZT0609. You can see the same kind of signature pivot. This is a much smaller little design. This is a smaller kind of budget alternative to the larger, more expensive 0609. Looking at about $37.95 for this. It is a stainless steel frame lock. It has uh, 8CR13 MOV steel, kind of what you'd expect from China. Uh, before we get to the specs, I do want to apologize a bit for my voice. Uh, I, I caught either a cold and or anthrax from my daughter, so uh, I have to, uh, I gotta get some videos done though. I'm gonna be out of town next week, so I uh, wanna make sure you guys got stuff to watch, so we're just gonna have to plow through this together. Let's do some specs and some size comparisons here. We have an overall length of just under 7 inches. Blade length dead on 3 inches. Blade thickness pretty thin and slicey, 0.11 inches. You have a handle thickness of 0.4 inches and a weight of 3.7 ounces, which is kind of high for a knife this size, but pretty darn good for a stainless steel frame lock. So uh, they did a pretty good job with that, I have to say. I was very pleasantly surprised with the weight. I was kind of expecting this to be a real tank just from the specs, but it is not. All right, let's do some size comparisons. We'll compare it first against some other Kershaws. They're also in this new KVT thing that I love that, uh, that Kershaw is doing. No more of the speed safe assisted stuff. Well, not no more. They still make some, but a lot of the new stuff's all coming out with KVT ball bearings, so we are going to show some of those. You have your Natrix carbon fiber and the Atmos also using you know the 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 KVT ball bearings which is such a great choice oh, I'm so glad they're doing that it, I, hoorah but these are both also 8CR13 about that same kind of 30-ish dollar price range and uh, as I said the ZT0609 we'll put that out again just for a second I already showed it so it's a little bit smaller than that uh, some of our standards, your Spyderco Delica, and uh, we will do the uh, Spyderco Para 3 since I have it right here. A little bit smaller than a Para 3, which I was kind of surprised by that. Because they're about, they're very similar blade lengths, but the overall package of this is, is very small. And your Spyderco PM2, much, much smaller than that, obviously. All right, let's talk about more about this knife. I, I really like the look of it. I like the design of it. It is kind of black on black on black on black, which uh, this was probably a bad background to choose for that. But uh, at least you can see through the pivot with my very white hands. So, <laughs> so that works out, my pale, pale hands. Uh, it's a... It's a cool design. I think it looks pretty neat. It's it's kind of tactical for a knife this size, uh, but it's not overly so. I do kind of wish this was just uh, this wasn't a coated blade. I would probably like it a bit more if the blade wasn't coated. But it it is kind of nice to have that on 8CR because 8CR is not the most stain the most stainless steel in the world. It it will get some corrosion if you don't take care of it. It's not super hard to take care of, but if, if you don't want to take care of it all, the coating is nice. It does uh, protect you from that. Uh, I like the, the overall shape of the milling and stuff. I think it looks cool. Uh, definitely some thought was put into how it looks. It has not only the see-through pivot, but it's also got this little see-through cutout in it, which I think is pretty cool. I kind of like that. Um, very nice looking design. Uh, Quality-wise, yeah. I uh, did. I do have an issue with this one. I've had very good luck with Kershaws. I, I do know some people complain about the Chinese Kershaws, and uh, I hadn't. I've had awesome luck with them. I haven't had a really bad one. This I still would not qualify as a really bad one. Uh, but you know, centering is good. All that worked out great. You know, the action was smooth. I did tear it apart, which we'll get to talk more about that here in this same section. Uh, action is okay. As you can see, I'm failing it now, but if you put some thought into it, it flips out, which is 
kind of the experience I've had with the other KBT Chinese Kershaws is the action's pretty good, but it's not like drop shutty, you know. This, this blade weighs nothing, so it's not surprising that it doesn't fall shut. But uh, you got to be a bit deliberate when you deploy it, that's for sure. But uh, it, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. The problem I have with it, the quality issue that I've got is uh, the grind on this is not even at all. Look at this side. And look at that side. It's way off. It is way off to one side. Uh, luckily, it is 8CR. I can fix that, but uh, I gotta say it. And also, the thing that I think is worse, and I've looked at a lot of pictures of this knife online, uh, it's the, the sharpening choil is just off enough that even from the factory, it wound up with a little bit of recurve on it, and that's just gonna get worse as you sharpen it over time. And it's 8CR, so you're gonna be sharpening it over time. Um, that I was I was pretty unimpressed with. Uh, I don't I don't I don't think it's supposed to have that little hint of recurve to it from pictures and stuff I can see. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, I don't think it's supposed to be there. Not a good job on the on the grind on this Kershaw. That was I've had really good luck, and I've I'm usually one to stick up for Kershaw about that stuff, but uh, not on this one. This one was not good. Uh, I did order this online, so I couldn't check it out, you know, before I got it or anything. Uh, yeah. Pretty unimpressed with that. Uh, the rest of it, quality-wise, is okay. Everything's fine. Um, ergonomically, it's pretty good. It's very comfortable in the hand, for sure. I mean, I really like it. The jimping up here is placed perfectly. This is an excellent overall design. Uh, the pocket has a nice deep carry pocket clip that doesn't cause any hot spots, which is really nice. Uh, this forward choil here, they've done a really good job of cutting out so you can access the lock bar without making it sharp. That seems to be problem a lot of knife makers are having where they they either cut this out not enough or too much too much makes it sharp you can feel the lock bar digging into your finger too little you can't get to it they did a great job with that uh it's it's a very comfortable easy knife to use for absolute sure uh i i do really like that about it um as far as the, the blade goes, as far as how it functions, it's fine. It's it's pretty slicey. It's thin stock. It's, a, you know, kind of a, it's a high, you know, a little fairly short hollow grind, but it works pretty well. It's uh, fairly thin behind the edge. I can't remember what it was now. I measured it, and then I immediately forgot. I want to say it was like 25, 26 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, slices pretty well. Came sharp enough out of the box. It, was, it wasn't crazy sharp out of the box, but pretty good. Uh, I have no problems with that as far as that goes. Like I said, it's just the uneven grind and the uh, kind of, I believe, accidental bit of recurve that uh, kind of annoyed me a little bit. Um, Carry-wise, carries great. 3.7 ounces, it's not terribly heavy. Again, it's, it's not light at all for this size, but a nice deep carry clip, super slim in the pocket, moves off to the side while wearing my little jeans here. We're going to make some noise because I accidentally put some boxes on top of there. No, we didn't. I managed to pull that out like a magician. But let's put this in the, these are in my, the old beat up Wranglers. Carries really well, very discreet. Does say Kershaw on the clip. Some people get really wound up about that. That that doesn't really bother me. If, if somebody's, most people who are so, uh, if they're paranoid enough to be looking at your pockets to see if you're carrying a knife, they don't know what Kershaw is. So they don't care. It could be a, it could be a pen for all they know. Um, action wise, as I said, uh, flips out fine. You just you have to be a bit, you have to commit to it though. That's for sure. And I have torn this apart and lubed it up and everything. So it isn't just like break in or grit or anything like that. It is it is something you just you just gotta commit to it. A lot of uh, lower end knives are like that. That's not a big deal. Uh, but a, a little slow for something on ball bearings. Closing it, it is definitely not drop shutty. Again, this blade weighs nothing. It's three inches, very thin, you know, hollow grind. It, it, it's not going to fall shut when expect it. You got to give it a little rest to get it closed, but that's fine. It is more of a push-button deployment, I would say. And again, very easy to access that lock bar. Not a ton of tension. It works really well. Uh, when you push it shut, you can feel it's clo it, it closes very smoothly. I think it's not falling shut just because of physics, not because of anything wrong with it. And my cat's rolling a ball around behind me. If you hear that noise, I apologize for it. Um, so, where does this knife have its biggest problems other than that thing with the blade, which is, is probably just this one? Uh, the biggest problems are 
that pivot requires a proprietary tool, which I have here. This is the uh, Kershaw STP tool. They cost like 16 bucks. I was not at all upset that I had to buy one for my 0609 because this is a $220 knife and buying a $16 tool percentage of price wise, not a big deal at all. I, I, I didn't mind it. I did mind that it took five months for this to come out after I got the knife and I had to just not be able to tear it apart for five months. That made me mad, but they're out now. They're available everywhere. So that's over with. But when it's a $38 knife and it requires a $16 tool to take it apart, to get that pivot apart, yeah, it's a really nice tool. It's well worth the 16 bucks. It's got little magnets. It's super easy to use. I tore this apart very easy. Nothing was overly Loctited. Uh, the screws aren't that great of quality, but they're tolerable for that, for this price. But it's, uh, yeah, it's really hard to ask somebody to buy a $38 knife and then buy a $16 tool. Yeah, it's a, that's a bit more than I could swallow. So if you already have an 0609 and have the tool or one of the other, uh, no, actually they have the other 609 is the only one that uses this tool, then it's fine. Now they are going to come out with more knives with this tool. So once they have six or seven of them out there, it's it it makes this a bit more palatable because maybe you have three or four of them and then it makes the price of this a bit more palatable. But yeah, for a thirty-eight dollar knife and then you got to go spend sixteen more bucks on a tool. I don't know. The other problem this knife has is uh, the budget market this year has just blown up in a great way, and there's some amazing knives out there for the same price. And I don't call this an amazing knife. I do call some of other Kershaws. Uh, the, these two, uh, the Nature's Carbon Fiber and the Atmos, they're great. Even though they are 8CR and everybody's going to want want at it, it's uh, I, I'm still, I, I like these a whole lot more than I like this. There's just nothing remarkable enough about this to justify the fact that it has a proprietary pivot that you got to buy a tool for. And then you've got stuff like the Civivi Backlash, which is, what, four bucks more? It's totally different size class, of course, but, you know, it's, it's better steel, better materials, better quality. It's just, yeah, it's a, if you like this design a lot and you already have that tool and it is a night, it does carry very, very well. Ergonomics are very good. Uh, then, then yeah, then go for it. But if you don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't really recommend it over anything else that's out there right now. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Hope you have a good one.